uh, let's turn in our Bibles to uh, Psalm chapter 81. Psalm chapter 81, and don't be scared, I do have a lot of notes, but um, uh, it is, it is uh, uh, we are going to be respectful with the time tonight. Psalm chapter 81, and um, at Mary Beth was talking about, in just a, a few moments ago, about uh, God giving her a verse at a time when she needed it. And isn't it great that he does that? He is a wonderful God, and he will touch our hearts. He'll show us something. And I'll be honest, last night, I, for no particular reason, I got home, got off the bus, and, and I, just, I just needed something. I went right, right into the office. I, I got my Bible out, and I just prayed for God to show me something and to help. And, and, and again, no particular reason. I... You know, uh, and it was neat. I got my dad's old Bible out, and and uh, I spent a few minutes reading his notes and crying. And then after that, after I got that out of me a little bit, and uh, you know, it's almost like I can hear him talking when I read his notes, and it is a wonderful help to me. I encourage you, dads, uh, write in your Bible and then hand that off to your children. I, I encourage you to do that. That will someday be a... A, a, a wonderful uh, spiritual heirloom for them. Um, but I asked God to show me something, and he brought me, and Psalm chapter 81, you know, uh, it was just, in my reading through the Psalms, it was the next one. This was the next one. And I, I, so I, I just opened it up, and I started reading, and God really spoke to me uh, about the, about, uh, through this Psalm. And... Um, I'll read it for you, and then we'll, we'll take a look at a, a couple of specific things from it. Psalm chapter 81, verse 1, Sing aloud unto God our strength. Make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob. Take a psalm and bring hither the timbrel, the pleasant harp with the psaltery. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the, in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. For this was a statute for Israel and a law of the God of Jacob. This he ordained in Joseph for a testimony when he went out through the land of Egypt, where I heard a language that I understood not. I removed his shoulder from the burden. His hands were delivered from the pots. Thou calledest in trouble, and I delivered thee. I answered thee in the secret place of thunder. I proved thee at the waters of Meribah, Selah. Hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee. O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me, there shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice, and Israel would none of me. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest out of the wheat, and with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee." Yeah, this, uh, this psalm spoke to me in many ways, uh, and I think one of the greatest blessings that we can have and we can speak of, uh, in a general sense, is answered prayers. God, how God answers our prayer, God hears our cry, and God answers our prayer. Verse number 7 really did, uh, it, it jumped out at me, and it, you know, I read... Uh, I read through the Bible multiple times in a year. I've read Psalm 81, I don't know how many times through, but yesterday when I was sitting there, verse number 7, just I mean it flew off the page at me. And it was so appropriate, it was so needed, and it was so uh, awesome. I don't know, that's a great theological word. It was awesome. I was so glad to read that. And... and um, um, just, I, I know we, last week we started talking about our worship and, and uh, started a series on worship and, 
And I'll give you a, a, just a short outline here, and we'll, we'll make some application here. Uh, verses 1 through 5 here in Psalm 81, we see the call to praise. God is calling His people to praise. This is a psalm of Asaph, and through the pen of Asaph, He is calling His people to praise. And the first three verses here really show us the qualities of our praise and worship to the Lord. Our praise needs to be sincere, uh, not contrived, not manipulated by the type of music or any other way. It needs to be sincere. Uh, our love for the Lord should pour out and spill out into sincere praise of God. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 9 tells us that let love be without dissimulation. That word dissimulation, it means uh, without hypocrisy. Uh, as Christians, we should love each other without hypocrisy. That's uh, Romans uh, chapter 12. Uh, dealing, uh, that section is dealing with our relationships one with another, and we should love each other sincerely, without hypocrisy. And if we are to love each other sincerely, shouldn't we so much more love the Lord sincerely? Our praise should be sincere. We should find ourselves sincerely praising Him. Our praise should be constant at all times. Our praise should be special. Uh, as it says in verse 3, blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on the solemn feast day. Uh, there, are, there were throughout uh, the Old Testament appointed days of praise, appointed days of thanksgiving. And we're in one of those times right now, uh, a season of thanksgiving. And our praise, we should have special seasons of praise while being thankful all the year round. I'm not saying, again, uh, we... Uh, uh, this is a, a horse that, uh, maybe I won't use that phrase, sorry Kayla. This is something that we say often, that our praise shouldn't be reserved for Thanksgiving, but it is altogether appropriate to have special seasons of praise of which we're doing. Our praise should be public. It says in verse 1, sing aloud, not hum silently, sing aloud. And you know, yes, if you're on a subway train, not that we have any around here, uh, when you start singing, people look at you. That's good, amen. That's good. You know, that was uh, we had an opportunity. One of the history tours I took through Boston. We were on the the T, and a whole group of us men. We just started singing hymns on the on the train, uh, on the T. And people, of course, were like, "What in the world?" A couple of them, you know, turned their back to us like that. Uh, but then, uh, you know, then guys started giving their testimony, saying, "This is what the Lord's done for me." And then a few more people turned their back like that, but some were listening. And uh, praise the Lord, uh, it was a good time. Hey, our praise should be public. We shouldn't be uh, quiet about these things. We shouldn't, be, uh, we shouldn't be reserved about how great God is. And, and when we have opportunity to praise God in front of others, let's praise God in front of others. Uh, our, uh, those around us should make note of uh, the praise uh, of our praise of the Lord. Philippians, uh, excuse me, Psalm chapter 33 says this, Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Praise the Lord with harp. Sing unto Him with psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto Him a new song, new song play skillfully with a loud noise. We need to be public in our praise of God. Uh, and hearty, when we sing the hymns, how about this, when we gather together as a body of believers, we need to sing heartily the hymns. Not just, you know, I, I remember, uh, I, I, I'm not going to bring up any church names, but I, I remember a, a church that I was a part of uh, for a long time in my life, where, my goodness, if, you, if somebody dropped a, a, a pencil on the carpet you could hear it during the song I mean it was just that quiet and and I uh, um, I went back to visit and I man I had a heart they sang a song I had no, I'd never even heard before and so I was trying to sing along I was trying to hush myself down a little bit because I was very badly very loudly singing it was it was a good song the lyrics were good I just didn't know it <laughs> but man it was it sounded awful and I felt like everybody in there was going like, who in the world is that loudmouth? What are they? 
He's got to, he doesn't know. He's got to be quiet. Hey, let, let's, w do we believe what we sing when we open up that hymn book? It, it, do we believe it? Let's sing with heart when we sing. Let's, uh, let's uh, lean our head back and get into it. Well, I don't sing very good. I don't care. And neither does God make a joyful noise, it says, unto the Lord. It doesn't mean you need to be able to carry a tune. Uh, that's fine if you can't. Uh, just make a joyful noise unto the Lord, okay? There's a call to praise, uh, but in verses 6 through 10, there's a cause to praise. Asaph uh, pens here of different reasons that we have that we can praise God for. Uh, God's not just saying, hey, let's, you guys praise me. Why? Well, just because I told you so. You know, I know that's the answer we give to young children because they can't really understand the reason why. As they get older, we try to explain the reason why. Uh, God gives us reasons here. Look at verse 6. I removed his shoulder from the burden. His hands were delivered from the pots. Okay? Uh, it, this is the emancipation. This is our emancipation as believers. This is the day that we got set free. This is, uh, And of course, we know he's speaking of specifically um, the deliverance from Egypt. Okay, we understand that. However, uh, that is symbolic of our deliverance from sin and death. And he has, God has emancipated us. That emancipation proclamation is John 3.16 or Romans chapter 10 verse uh, 9 or verse 13. Uh, or Acts chapter 16, verse 31, whichever one. That's our emancipation proclamation. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And when we believed, we were saved. And uh, when we were saved, he removed our shoulder from the burden. You know that burden of trying to keep the law? Of trying to live a good enough life? And this is fruitless. Now, listen, I, I mean, God saved us and that grace of God teaches us that we need to live holy lives. But our efforts and mankind's efforts to work our way into salvation will fail 100% of the time. And a life trying to examine our own life so hard and to live a life that uh, has all the externals will simply leave us frustrated. He has relieved our burden. He has given us the Holy Spirit of God when we got saved. And now the things that we do that are good we do because the Holy Spirit is working in us and through us, not because we're working hard ourselves. And there's a total difference there. If we're relying on our flesh to do these works, we need to cut it out and just trust God and, and follow Him. And the more we get close to God, the more His Holy Spirit will work in us. And what an amazing thing it is to see lives that He is changing from the inside out. And uh, you know what? Uh, with new believers, it, it is from the inside out. We don't expect uh, everything to change just like that. Their desire has changed, according to 2 Corinthians 5, 17. They have become new creatures. They have a new want to, uh, the things they used to want to do. They don't want to do them anymore. They want to please God. They just don't know how yet. And we, as we disciple them, as we teach them, uh, they... Uh, they learn, they learn uh, what it is that uh, God desires for them, and, and they, uh, through the Holy Spirit, work those works. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. That's Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Verse number 7, now, this, this is the one. Thou calledest in trouble, and, and I delivered thee. I answered thee in the secret place of thunder. And this is speaking of the nation of Israel calling out to the Lord as they had their backs to the water, as they were looking at the entire army of Egypt coming at them. And they looked to the left, and there was no deliverance. And they looked to the right, and there was no deliverance. And Moses said, Stand still and see the salvation of God. And they trusted in that God who was in the, the column of smoke and the pillar of fire. And he made a way for them. He, he called, uh, they called to Him, and He answered them from the secret place of thunder. He delivered them. And today, 
even in 2017, in the midst of our own storms, we will call unto Him, and He will answer us. He will deliver us. He will answer us from the secret place of thunder. It, 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 what happened when Jesus was awakened to see the raging seas? He spoke, and the calm came. What happened when uh, the seas were raging, and, and He walked across the water, and Peter started walking towards Him, and as the waves were going, and, and what happened? Peter started to sink. He brought him back in the boat. You know, sometimes, uh, sometimes Jesus will calm the storm. Sometimes He'll just calm His servant in the midst of the storm. It works both ways. It, but the, the key is we call unto Him. If we call unto Him. You know, He still wants His children to call unto Him. And, and um, uh, there's times in our own life when the storm... Uh, by the way, this is, it, it says here, and, and uh, I have down in my notes Psalm chapter 46. You can read that later on. Uh, we call the Lord when there's trouble. We don't call ghostbusters. We don't call anything else. You know who you're going to call? I'm going to call the Lord, okay? I'm going to let someone else call ghostbusters, and I'll call the Lord. Uh, but notice it's a place of secret thunder. Do you know in your life sometimes you could be in the midst of a raging storm and nobody else around you hears the thunder or sees the lightning, but what a storm it is. I mean, we all have storms in our heart, in our head, or in our mind. Hey, it's, it's a spiritual warfare, and these spiritual battles are, are, are battles that everyone else will not necessarily know is happening at that very moment. You can be talking to somebody, not realizing at all the agony that they are in at night. Or in the morning, their tears as they cry out to God for help and for something. But it's in those times, too, where God will answer their call. Where God will speak to them out of that secret place of thunder. He will speak peace unto us. He will help us. Do we praise God for answered prayers? Uh, we need to. We need to. Like, like my wife said, uh, uh, you know, for the small things and for the big things. God answers prayers, and it, is a, it should give us cause to praise. And uh, uh, I pray this, uh, this evening, if there is somebody in the midst of one of these storms, call out to the Lord, and He will answer you from the midst of that place, and He will help you. We can praise God for His redemption, for answered prayers. Uh, it, verses 8 through 10 here, specifically, uh, you say, well, how would you praise God for that? We praise God because He is a jealous God. Now, normally, okay, normally, jealousy is something, in a human respect, that's not a good thing. Uh, there is, and I understand, it, on one side of the coin is, well, if I love my wife that much, you know, uh, it, that I'm jealous of her, Yes, it's good that you love your wife or that you love uh, whoever it is that we're talking about. Uh, but, only, but truly, only God can be truly jealous without sin. Our, uh, human jealousy will go to a point and then it will exceed that point at times. Yes, we treasure those that are close to us. I treasure my wife. And uh, the man that ever tried to lay a hand on her, he better run. <laughs> Yeah, you don't want to have to run real fast. I'm kind of big and slow. But I mean, he better run. <laughs> Amen. But, uh, but God loves us so much. He is jealous for us. He, he desires to be our one and only. He doesn't want us uh, seeking after other things to please us. He doesn't want us to center our lives uh, on anything else but Him. And we ought to be honored that God loves us so much that He is jealous over us. And, and he, he said here, I, He said in verse 8, hear, hear, O my people, and I will testify unto thee. O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me, 
There shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any strange God. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. Hey, if you have need, come to me. Don't go somewhere else. He loves us so much. He desires us to come to Him. And we ought to not think, well, uh, I know uh, sometimes we get the idea, well, I'm not going to pray for Him about the smaller things, only for the big things, because He's got a lot, he, he has a lot of people praying. Hey, He's an eternal God. He is omniscient. He is om, omnipresent. He's omnipotent. He can answer every prayer in the world at once and do it exceedingly abundantly well. Let's not ever uh, think for a moment that we're going to trouble God with something that He might find trivial. He says, open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. He's a, we can praise God for His jealousy over us. He wants all of us. Hasn't He earned it? Is there anything, can we honestly say with God giving us eternity, can we honestly say that there is, that I can give too much to the Lord? We can't, can we? He, he deserves our everything, our all. And uh, He is worthy. There's the call to praise, there's the cause of praise, and there's the collapse. Unfortunately, in verses 11 through 16, the collapse of praise. The nation of Israel failed to hearken unto the Lord, so the Lord gave them what they wanted. Let's turn to Psalm chapter 106 for just a moment. We'll, we'll skip right back to there. But uh, this is very reminiscent of what God says here in Psalm 106. Let's start in uh, verse, verse number 12. Then believed they his words, they sang his praise, they soon forgot his works. They waited not for his counsel, but lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. And he gave them their request, but sent leanness unto their soul. He gave me what I want, then I realized that's not what I really wanted. You know, be careful what you wish for, you just might get it. And you just might find it really wasn't what you wanted. It really wasn't what you needed. You know, when we go outside, when we get off the right path, when, when our heart uh, is not pining for the Lord, when our relationship with Him is, uh, we're placing things in there, uh, we, may, uh, we may desire after something in particular. And God will ensure that we get it. But it won't satisfy us in the way that we thought it would. And I thought this was going to be the thing. No, God's the thing. That is stuff. That will all one day burn. You know, we can't take it with us. It's all going to burn. And this is what happened to Israel. They, they failed to hearken unto the Lord. The Lord ceased to be enough in their life. He gave them everything they needed. He gave them, uh, he, he protected them, he but yet, but yet, they turned away. And so God said, okay, if that's what you want, you can have that. Uh, you remember uh, at Kibroth Hattaveya, uh, at Kibroth Hattaveya, they lusted for meat. Oh, Lord, this manna, uh, Lord, the manna is good, but I'm getting tired of it. We want meat. Back in Egypt, we had garlic and leeks and that sounds gross i don't i won't, don't want leeks but uh it, it, i had to find out what leeks but it doesn't sound especially good but everything they, they they lusted after what they had in egypt so god said okay they'll have they'll have it and in fact uh they'll have it so much it will come out their nostrils is what he said and right at that moment you knew this is not going to be good <laughs> this is not going well and and uh, later on you read that uh, while the, while the uh, uh, meat was in their mouth, he smote them. <laughs> and uh, in another passage, referring to the same thing, he said, God slew the fattest of them. So I've got to be real careful, amen? I don't... <laughs> uh, <laughs> we've, uh, 
Yeah, how did we get there again? That whole meatball thing. Uh, hey, when we get our eyes off God, when we, when we uh, start to forget all the reasons we have to praise God, all the reasons that we have uh, to give Him glory and to seek Him, then God might give us the incidental things that we want, these little things that we want, but it, we're going to be lean. Those spiritual blessings that we thought that would bring us. They just won't be there. That comfort that we thought we would have in whatever that is, it just isn't there. And uh, look what it says in verse 13. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. Doesn't that remind you of when Jesus was standing over the city, weeping over it, and said, oh, uh, that... I could gather my children together as a hen gatherer through chicks, but Israel would not. Oh, God wanted, it broke His heart to see them pining after something else. And look what it, verses 14 to 16, I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto Him. But their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat and the, the honey out of the rock. Should I have satisfied thee? This is speaking of God's blessings that they could have had and that they should have had, but that they didn't have because they turned away from Him and started putting their mind on something else that's going to satisfy them. It, and by the way, this is representative of how He takes care of those who are praising Him, striving uh, for Him, wanting to be close to Him. Our great God. This is how He takes care of us. He gave us the greatest blessing that we could ever have. He gave us Jesus, His only begotten Son. You know, it doesn't matter in life those things that are behind us. Those sins that we have. Hey, if you're in here tonight and you've never been saved, you've never, you don't know for sure you're on your way to heaven, you can know for sure. Because Jesus Christ went to the cross. He recognized, God recognized that because of our sin, we could not, we could not enter the gate to heaven. Because of our sin, we could not have everlasting life. Can we work our sins away? No, we can't. Can we cleanse our own heart? No, we can't. So he had to set, something had to be done. And that something, his name is Jesus. Jesus left heaven. Jesus came to earth. As a little baby, and we, of course we celebrate Christmas coming right up, and those little nativity scenes, that's, that's Jesus, we know that. He came to this earth. He lived a perfect life, no sin. And then He went to the cross. When He went to the cross, He took every single sin that we have ever committed, He took it with Him. He suffered, He bled, He died for us. And you say, well, I didn't know Jesus, but He knew you. Remember, He's God. Jesus is God. He left heaven, He came to earth, and He died for our sins. And then on the third day, they placed Him in a tomb, on the third day He rose again. All so that we could believe on Him and receive everlasting life. And if you've never if you have never received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, you can. You just pray to Him. Just call out to Him. Lord, I believe You. Will You save my soul? And He will save you. I pray if you're in here tonight and you've never done that, He can save you. I know because He saved me. You know what I can say? And I, I, one of the great things uh, that, uh, uh, about, uh, that, that we heard today at the service was uh, uh, how, how sure 
everyone was that brother rick was on his way to heaven he had such a testimony it was no they didn't have to wonder about it and he would he would talk to people he was a great soul winner he talked to people wherever he went and he'd tell them he'd tell them you know uh even after he when he found out he got cancer i have cancer you know he'd share he'd be sharing with them he said but i know where i'm going i know what's going to happen when i die and and uh, he, this would be an open door, many open doors through this. I think, I think there were people, there are people who have been saved through his testimony just of him getting cancer. Crazy, huh? Sometimes God's plans, we can't see that, but who knows that one of those people might be the next great preacher or whatever, ne- next missionary, next... Hey, Jesus, God gave us Jesus, the ultimate blessing. Let's be thankful Let's praise Him with all that we have. If you've never been saved, all you have to do is ask Jesus Christ to save your soul, and He will. But those of us that are saved, we have so many reasons to praise God. Let's be quick to do it. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank You for Your wonderful Word. Thank You for Your giving us your only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Father, I pray that as we uh, go from this place tonight, I pray, Lord, that we would be quick to praise You. I pray, Lord, that we would seek You when we have those times of trouble, when those storms rage in our life and in our hearts and in our minds, Lord, please help us to seek You. And Lord, we will praise You for all that You're going to do. Father, I love You and I thank You. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand tonight. I'm gonna, let's, let's sing a chorus, just a quick chorus of thank You, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank You, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free amen well let me just say uh, from my family to each one of you have a happy thanksgiving